after Counter Down Park, after uh, Nine Miles Hospital, War 26, bang, I remember being in Camper Down Park. <laughs> now, Camper Down Park, I definitely was on the outskirts of Camper Down Park. I was on the eastern side of Camper Down Park and I was looking in a westerly direction. Uh, I could see the tops of the trees, it was again dark, everything that happened to me this whole event was darkness, uh, it was at night time. I could see the tops of the forest and above the forest I could see three lights, three little lights or some kind of craft or for, lights in a formation right, descending slowly, slowly down to the tops of the forest, that's all I remember about being on the outside, right? And bang, I'm inside the forest. And it's pitch dark again, but just in front of me, I could remember there's a fence in front of me, a little wire fence with wooden posts. And across this fence, there was an open, an open part of the forest, then another part of the forest, maybe 50, 80 meters away. Inside this forest, I distinctly recall seeing a light. Eight to ten feet off, eight to ten feet off the ground, a few meters off the ground, and maybe ten feet, eight ten feet in diameter. This brilliant light in the forest, and that's all I remember till the dogs woke me up. The German Shepherd's dogs. The police had found me. I wondered how anyone ever found me up in Camperdown or what I was doing up there. Uh, somebody must have seen me phoned the police, the police came up there with the dogs and they found me and I, I, I don't know right all I remember is hearing dogs barking, I seem to come out of a trance or out of a coma or, or something and I'm so free into these big dogs, I thought oh, it was me, I was going to die, that, that was it, I'm dead I'm a dead, I thought I was dead and I thought I was, and the next thing I remember is the pain in my body it was so painful. Every part of my body ached like I had been like, tortured or something. And my feet, okay, my feet, I, they were so cold that when I got back to the hospital, the police took us back to the hospital, my feet were so painful that I thought maybe I'd lose my feet. I remember asking the, the doctors for painkillers and they gave me these big painkillers and I could only swallow from my feet. But... Uh, when the police found me at Camper Down with the dogs and took me, I remember what I remember about that journey. The only thing I remember is being free in case that soldier, that guy who was still in the hospital, right, the guy who was like had an ominous uh, presence. Uh, but thankfully, when I got to the hospital, this guy was gone and I was so relieved. But I can't remember too much, it's just like a feeling. I had a feeling of being relieved, but I can't remember right, any visuals or audios. It's just a feeling, you know, like a sixth sense, instinctive feeling. And it wasn't until my brother Kevin and my older brother Kevin and my family came up to the hospital that I started to like, like, like retune, face shifting back into reality. That's when I was just. I got my mind back for some reason and I could start to back post analyze, back engineer what had happened to me. But I didn't have much to go on. Just what I'm talking about now is that's really all I could kinda remember, you know. So when I got back home from the hospital uh, I remember realising that the police had had my computer. They got my computer and I knew that everything on my hard drive all my data, everything I'd done on the internet, they had, but on my BIOS, my basic input-output system, I had a double password system, so it, it, took, it probably took them a little while to get through my passwords to get to my hard drive, but I was running a, a Linux system, and on one of, I had a partition with Windows on it, a hidden partition with Windows, and on one of those partitions, I had a hidden folder, and that's where I had stashed my starship. So when I got my computer back, that's all I was thinking about. I hadn't told anyone about my UFO pictures, not my family or anyone. So all I was thinking about is, I wonder if my starships are still in my hand drive. 
and lo and behold, they were still in my hard drive. So the police, they did not get my starships, and I've still got them with their coordinates, but I think they got them too because I had memory cards, SD cards, and CDs that just vanished from my house. I don't know where they went, you know. So, all this that happened to me, it was, I believe, all started from the, the people on these websites, who, the global intelligence guys who monitor these websites. They have in high intellectual, psychological ways of communicating to people to get people to, uh, to control you and this is what they were doing, right? When they started, right? When I started <coughs> observing what these guys were doing, I seen them doing it to maybe a couple of people, and he thought maybe I was just imaginary at first, right? So I started looking deeper into this then. Because I'd been on these websites for so long, uh, I came to there and noticed too, and they started doing it to me. So at first, I thought maybe it was the CIA, something like that, but I was, I was, uh, they were trying to like, eventually, it's very hard to explain how they do these things, I could split, explain it, but basically what they do is they sort of work on a subscription level, and eventually you can, can communicate to each another, right, on subscripts, and that's not that hard for people to understand, you no know, subscription uh, communication. So when these guys started doing it to me, right, I'm, I picked up on that stuff instantly. I'm good at seeing that stuff, right, the subliminals, right, the abstract. Uh, I couldn't help but to monitor what these guys were doing to me. So this is what I did. And eventually I made it, I'm, I slipped up and made it obvious. So they knew, because they weren't sure that I knew what they were doing, right? okay, but, Eventually I messed up, they knew, then they came out and they told me that they want me to do these things for them. And, uh, you know, because I just, I just didn't do it, and that's when I got hurt. You know, that's when I got hurt. I, I said no to these guys, and I got hurt. Uh, I think, oh, if there's any political activist guys out there, young guys, who maybe up and coming or are already uh, working for some of these guys or being controlled by them. Uh, I could just feel so sorry for these guys because I had everything. I had all the evidence. Uh, UFO pictures. I had Nazi sniper target signs. I, I got stabbed. My dog's dead. I, I got so much evidence. I was on the news. And even that couldn't get me any help. You know, the politicians wouldn't help me, the reporters, the ufologists. Uh, the only people who helped me was my community and myself. And more than all, what helped me most of all, though, I think, was uh, my UFO pictures. This is what drew enough attention to my statement and my, uh, my evidence that they thought it was just best to leave Trevor alone because he's just got too much stuff and this is why I made it free. So this is my warning to anyone. Uh, if you if you get involved with it, you got to keep away from these guys. Right? If they've got you, you, the only way you will ever be free of these guys, if you get free of these guys, it will be in a body bag. That's the only way. Unless you've got an immense amount of evidence. I, I feel so sorry for these people. Uh, have to uh, run, have a run in with these guys.